Hi, everyone. So I'm here to talk about this really interesting problem we have in Marketplace. Uh, it's around the measurement. So like all these things that we just covered sound pretty cool. I don't know about you guys. I think these are really, really cool problems, but they also are extremely complex. There's a, just a very high level of complexity here. And some very basic questions become really hard to answer in this high level of complexity. Something like, how do we measure success? I'm like, we want to be successful. Are there side effects to the changes we're making? So if we launch a feature, is there going to be some ramification that's actually going to make us less efficient overall? And then probably the most important question of it all is, is this like massive algorithm or massive change we're making really helping our riders and drivers? So that's something, what's the point of working so hard if we're not actually delivering value to our riders and drivers? So the way we do this is we experiment a lot enough to build a standalone platform for the entire company to use. So when you hear about experimentation, one of the most common things you might've heard about or used in your life is A-B experimentation. So you could take your market, uh, take riders, take drivers, and then you can segment them in A and B groups and then launch that change. In one side, you'll have your control group, which is A, and then on the other side, you'll have B and you'll measure some sort of a lift in a metric. So this is just very basic A-B experimentation using t-testing. There's some interesting concerns with A-B experimentation, especially in a marketplace. And this is very subtle. I can spend literally hours covering this, but I'm going to try to recap this in a simple enough way. So normally, what, when you launch an A-B experiment, what you're trying to measure is kind of, if you look at this plot here, is you launch that change and you have some sort of metrics like trips per driver. And then you launch that change and you kind of want to measure that lift. The problem we'll see is uh, when you launch a change for one side of the marketplace, since we are a dual-sided marketplace, you're going to impact the other side of the marketplace. As a result, it'll impact the, back to the original side again. And this sounds confusing. I'll try to give you an example. Say you have a change that impacts drivers. So somehow it increases the or decreases the amount of drivers in the platform. So this particular change like moves a certain metric on, in terms of number of uh, drivers that are active. What that'll do is it'll actually impact our riders as well because we have a, a network. And then when you impact those riders, those riders will impact other drivers that are not in the treatment cohort. And what we call this problem is cannibalization. So when you're trying to isolate the effects of a treatment that you're launching, you're kind of impacting the other part of the market and not getting the right measurement. So in this example, what will actually happen with cannibalization is that blue line. So what you'll end up measuring is that if you run a simple AB experiment and do standard statistics is the difference between the T line and the blue line. But what you really wanna measure is the, dis the distance between the white line and the T line. And so that cannibalization problem makes, us, makes it so that we cannot run an AB experiment. Okay, so we ran into this problem. We're like, okay, how do we solve this? Simple solution, you experiment one metric at a time, uh, one market at a time. So you'll take an experimental change, you'll take this complex thing, which is Uber's market, and then you'll kind of try to figure out the infer what the impact of that experiment change is on the market. All right, simple enough. This also doesn't work because all the things we've been talking about so far. There's a lot of exogenous factors that are acting on our market things like weather patterns, like rainstorm events, seasonal things, like students coming into town, students leaving town. Uh, we have traffic jams show up. Other noise, like our com competitions, if they're investing heavily, they'll, that'll impact our metrics. And then there's a bunch of the, these endogenous effects, things that we are actually doing to ourselves. We have a lot of talented engineers that are making config changes, that are deploying code, that are causing potentially outages. And how do we model all of that together and actually tease out the actual impact of that experimental change to the experiment results. The other problem we have is we can't really use historical data for this like percent level comparison of this change. Week over week, we have huge variation in our like standard metrics. So like this is one example from San Antonio and that's a week over week plot. You can see those two comparisons literally you see a 3x difference in the number of trips. And that's basically we had MLK the uh, day the week before and that causes that kind of a shift. So we can't really use historical data. All right, so how do we actually measure change of an Im deliberate, uh, impact of a deliberate change we're making in the market? The short answer is we come up with some really nifty and clever experiment designs. 
one of the coolest one of these and the more cutting edge strategy here is something called the synthetic control approach. So the crux of the idea behind synthetic control is like, hey, you're going to make a change to a treatment city. What you do is you construct a synthetic city using machine learning and make the change in the real city, hold the synthetic city as it is, and then you can kind of do like a causal inference based Im like impact assessment. So in this particular example, we were launching a change in Chicago and we kind of modeled Chicago using a weighted average of other cities uh, that were in, if you see, the, this was what the model picked and they're kind of in the same neighborhood as Chicago. You see New York plays a big role, Philadelphia plays a role. We also added a dash of Milwaukee and Rockford to actually construct a synthetic Chicago. Then we launched the change in Chicago and resulted in the actual thing. So how do we do this? We collect a lot of data. We model noise as kind of similar systems to what forecasting systems do. We generate a model for each of these cities and each of these metrics and perform our inference. Uh, we use a wide variety of um, machine learning techniques to generate these synthetic techniques, uh, synthetic cities. And then there's a massive hyperparameter space that we run into with millions of potential parameters that we can tune that we tune using Bayesian optimization. And we can parallelize these over cities, days, metrics, all that good stuff. So this is an example uh, of a treatment we launched which was supposed to target support tickets in a city. And you see on the, the right here is the training period where we are basically have the solid line, which is the actual metric and the dotted line, which is the synthetic metric. And it, you can see like it fits pretty well up till that moment when we made that intervention. And during the testing period, we can actually finally measure the causal impact or the causal like change caused on the actual number of support tickets and there was a significant drop. So this was a successful experiment. We also have a lot of unsuccessful experiments that I didn't want to show you guys. All right, to sum this up, we have problems that go via space and time and a multitude of products. And kind of like back to the theme that Chintan and Owen were talking about, this needs scaling up. You can't really do this on one person's laptop uh, but in an R model that's running. We really need to figure out how to do this to serve 600 marketplaces that are running reliably uh, with like 10,000 heavy, heavy dimensionality uh, in a successful way. So the way we kind of did that is we've industrialized our machine learning platforms. And that's how we get to 4 billion forecasts a minute that are generated. We're doing 30,000 synthetic control models right now to do these inferences. We have, I believe, 30 million dispatch pair predictions we're doing every minute. So what, like, the recipe for making this happen is build everything for scale, build it for reliability. Like from our perspective, you requesting a car to go home and not getting one is the worst thing that can happen. If you want a meal and you cannot get it on time, it's not what, we want, what, what we're here for. So accuracy becomes really important. Every basis point matters. And by using this and building this core technology, we can layer on these like application level things it's like marketplace or maps, which are really complex things on its own. But the beauty of it is once you figure out all this magic, you can build these vertical businesses that can leverage that in a more uniform way. So we started out by building all of this for ride sharing. Very quickly, we were able to bootstrap Eats. And in the future, we're going to use this for ATG as freight and our recent jump bikes acquisition as well.